Well, good morning, folks. Here we are on the Sunshine Coast. Young people come to play and old people go to die. And that's why I'm up here, not to die, but to ride Suzuki's GSX 8S. Now, this is the latest incarnation of the Powerpel Twin that we've seen in the uh, V-Strom 800DE. Uh, 270 degree crank, so it's got a little bit of character and stuff like that. But look, I'm gonna tell you all about that stuff. Let's not bog down in the technicalities. Let's get out around beautiful Maroochydore, the Sunshine Coast on Suzuki's latest. We're gonna do some stuff at the track at Lakeside. So we'll get have a look at that on the track again. Whew, look out. And uh, yeah, Sunshine Coast, Suzuki, snag, away we go. I was up this way on my lap last year, about this time last year, I'm heading into Kenilworth now, and I just have to say, these roads are absolutely knackered. Uh, I think it had a bit to do with floods, but so bumpy and choppy, and it really is um, pushing the suspension on this bike about as hard as you'd want to. Of course, in Europe, we don't get roads like we get in Australia, and. Uh, Bikes are tested hard here. Uh, we're brutally tough on bikes. These Australian roads are fitting them. It's just getting worse and worse. So day one's out of the way, guys, on the launch, the domestic launch of the Suzuki uh, GSX 8S. Today we uh, made our way up from Maroochydore through Kenilworth, the beautiful uh, tourist town, through Mount Me up to Clear Mountain, which is pretty nice, and as you can see, it's pretty clear. The things to talk about this bike, I, I was sitting on there, I'm thinking long and hard about, and I thought, 14,190 bucks, where does that sit? And I thought, hang on a minute, you've got a bike that's got a bi-directional quick shifter, a five inch TFT screen, three uh, stages of traction control, three engine maps, I was starting to think five or eight years ago, that would have been a fully fruited Primo bike. And that means that the UJM, which is the Universal Japanese Motorcycle, or whether Suzuki likes it or not, that's what that bike is, uh, is now fully and completely fruited. So I thought, that's a big plus. And I think that's gonna sell these bikes. Uh, the thing I liked about the bike, uh, really nice engine and the torque is nice and low in the range. It's not massively powerful, but uh, where the power is, is right off the bottom, and that's where you want it on a bike like this. Uh, I love the blue that you see here. That uh, tells me, it says to me Suzuki. Suzuki was always that light blue, uh, sort of that uh, turquoisey blue, and they've gone back to it. So, you know, red for Honda, yellow for Yamaha, and blue for Suzuki, so full marks there. Now, styling, I wanted to talk about styling. Um, the media blurb says new era. Now, we all know, you know, that's market speak. But that's, a, I thought, in this case, it might actually be true. The bike is actually very boldly styled. If you have a look at where the seat finishes here, at this snug little thing here, it's right up forward. And I can tell you that there's gonna be people doing illegal tail tidies all over the world as soon as they possibly can there, because that's gonna look grouse with the tail tight on it. I didn't tell you to do it, okay? You didn't hear it from me. Uh, these bull horns, I was calling them bull horns. I was sitting up on top of the bike and it looks like a bull. So the styling on the bike is actually quite bold. This thing here, the, the little nose cone here, it's, it really looks like a wasp. So for 14,190 with a bike that's so fruited that really is a mid, mid-sized street fighter, I reckon they've done really well. It's uh, quick enough, it's uh, comfortable enough, and it's really well priced.
Okay, time for a uh, lap of Lakeside. Now we've got our uh, traction control set at one, which is a least intervention, and A uh, for our uh, mapping, engine mapping, which is the most aggressive. You gotta remember it's a road bike. I mean, you know, we're taking it out to Lakeside, racetrack. Thank you. So, let's get some warmth in these tyres. And some warmth in these bones, eh? Now the quick shift really is good when you're up it. But that's when they're at their best, of course. This one's bi-directional, which is a fancy way of saying it goes up and down. But yeah, this, uh, this little track, probably perfect for a bike like this. I expected the 8S to run out of puff a bit, but it, it tends to keep giving, I'm surprised. I thought the racetrack would find that engine out a bit, but I am very surprised that there's kind of more than enough grunt. Um, and the light flickable nature of the bike is making it friendly as hell. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised. Brakes are great. Now we're heading into Hungry Corner. It's called Hungry because it, it eats people. So, not that I want to get eaten today. This is... Uh, I've had my major oopsie on a track a few years ago and my fastest lap is well behind me because of that. Um, 11 broken bones and an emergency care flight will do that for you. But at 8 tenths, this thing is heaps of fun and that's how I want to ride now. My 10 tenths days are gone. Do I need a leader bike? Do I need a, a 1300 or something? No, I don't. Do I want 200 horsepower? No, I don't. But yeah, see how this keeps going. I, I get on the gas now and it wants to push on. And I'm surprised at that. Turn in's good. Front end is really good. Got a feeling the rear suspension is just doing its job. I think if you put a pipe on this thing and a really good shock uh, at 14,190 right away, you've probably built yourself a a decent little weapon that'll surprise some bigger, fancier, more expensive gear on a track day. So yeah, a bit of a revelation there for the old Snaggy. Now let's try and put in a reasonable lap. Fucked around for long enough, haven't we? Let's have a bit of a dip here, eh? Pegs are touching down to the right hand side there. So that tells me that's all we've got clearance wise. Onto the main straight now. And let's see if we can get some feed out of this thing. Yeah, it's all right. famous bus stop and it's put here to slow us down a bit and it's technical and tricky and particularly this last little bit it's got this nasty little kink that makes you want to go wide about here but the sooner you're on the gas here the sooner you can set up hungry for a really good pass you're gonna be late here try and be as late as you can and hit this apex about there, and gas. Now the idea here, Sean Giles, my friend, told me be late there, Snaggy, and then suck into that apex. And that'll do me. That's a bit of fun. That is a bit of fun. For an old man, you still get around all right, Snaggy. I keep telling myself that anyway. You can be the judge of that. That was fun. So the bike 
really nice and planted at the front, um, very predictable. And the surprise packet for me is the fact that it now, it, it doesn't run out of puff. It doesn't pay a price for being A, a parallel twin and B, 776 cc's. So yeah, small capacity, uh, 202 kilograms, user friendly as hell. Uh, I'm very surprised at just how much fun this bike can be on a racetrack. Um, I really thought it was brave of the Suzuki guys to take us to a racetrack. Um, and, and hats off to them really because they took us on a road ride that was choppy and rough. Um, and if it was going to show up any uh, shortcomings with the bike, um, this racetrack and a, and a choppy road ride would do it. So, yeah, hats off. How'd you go, Jeffrey? Awesome, mate. Eh? It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, Surprised the shit out of me. Out of the it's great through the bus stop. Yeah. Flick, flick. Right, right, left, right. That's where it's at its best. Yeah, love it. And really big surprise. I thought it was going to be wallowy. It's just full throttle. Off gear. Don't have to back off the turn one. I'm so surprised too, mate. Especially with the, after yesterday, I thought the shock wouldn't handle it. Yeah, me too. You don't touch it. You go out of the track. That's fine.